Welcome back. This is Yamma Jack, and we've got Suicidal Farmhouse Gunslinger. I do not want to be down here. Get me the heck out of here. Yoink. Let's get over somewhere a little bit safer before we start uh, worrying about anything else. I don't really like this map too much. Um, you can kind of see why. There's just an incredible amount of fog. Oh goodness, I have my, my headphones on way too loud. Alright, so in the last episode I talked about one topic that uh, that I wanted to talk about more, but I had to talk about the other one first because of... Uh, it was just more important. Because it involved you guys, right? I mean, you have to talk about that first. You gotta get that out of there. I need the feedback as soon as, uh, as, soon as I can get it, you know? Anyway, so I talked about one topic that I wanted to talk about, and uh, today... Now we're gonna get to we're gonna get to talk about it, which is uh, is good fun. So I have this this friend of mine who uh, he's a whole linguistics nerd guy, right? And I love talking to him because and I've been over this before, but I love I love talking to people who are passionate about certain subjects and, and knowledgeable because I get to then have that knowledge to to a certain extent. Um, Anyway, he's into uh, to linguistics, and uh, I learned I learned a lot talking to him a lot about a lot of different things. I guess there's a crossover between um, linguistics and and like history. Just I, you know, logically there there would kind of have to be because to to learn about the history of language, you have to also understand to a certain extent. Anyway, um, the history of the cultures that that spoke the language, right? You have to understand the motivations and 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 understand all that kind of stuff to be able to to make some kind of an educated guess to to why they might have made the decisions they made or uh, used the words that they used, right? So um, there's there's a crossover there. So whenever I'm talking to him, it's always a lot of a lot of uh, new stuff that that I didn't know about. Because to me. History isn't something that uh, interests me. History, language, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's all stuff that I don't personally find to be interesting. Um, not enough to, to motivate myself to, to go and and learn about it necessarily. Um, but I still I still like learning about anything really. Like there isn't a heck yeah. There isn't really anything that. Um, I don't like learning about it if somebody wants to tell me about it, right? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll happily talk about anything. Anyway, so we were talking the other day about, uh... See, see if I can pronounce this while I'm, I'm all... I can do okay pronouncing it when I'm, when I'm like, sitting in a controlled environment. But while I'm recording KF2, it's, uh, it's a bit of a, bit of a strange sound, but... We we're talking about Nahuat, uh... Nahuatl? Nope, that's, that's not it. You know, I can do so much better when I'm not... Surrounded by Zeds all the time. It's a, it's a very strange sound, but it's Nahuatl, and we're talking about that, which is the uh, the language spoken by like the Aztecs and and all of uh, well not all of those maybe all of those guys. I'm not too sure, honestly. I know that it was spoken by the Aztecs and um, definitely like uh, a very prominent language in use there, and uh, still in use to uh, to a certain extent in uh, in like Mexico and and whatnot. Um, Anyway, we're talking about that and how uh, they had a lot of loner words from, like, the Spanish who came over and killed them all. <laughs> Basically, you know. Sorry, but yeah. Um, so they had like a lot of loner words, and uh, my friend was saying that there's a lot of loner words that we've taken from Nahuatl, and that kind of blew my mind. So we started to talk about these these words, and it's like chocolate comes from from Nahuatl and like tomato and ocelot and all these different words that that we that come from like the um, the Mesoamerican like civilizations and you know when, when you think about it it's like obvious right like obviously these are things that were native to the Americas so the, the words for them are going to stem largely from America, right? Like, that's that's where they were originally, so when when somebody else comes over and they're like, what the heck's this thing? And somebody's like, oh, well, that's chocolate, right? And it's like, it's chocolate, <laughs> you know? Um, hello, please don't kill me. 
So I don't know. I just I thought that was like just so cool cuz I never think about that kind of stuff, right? It's it's obvious when you think about it, but I think I've talked about this uh, before, but maybe I haven't. Um, when I first got my job at uh, like a, a retail store, I was like, oh right, like there have to be people who go around putting up the price tags and like putting the stock out. Like I just I never thought about it before, but thinking about it, like it's it's obvious, right? But uh, I don't know. It's it's, uh, it's it was interesting to me to learn how much of uh, what we take for granted is uh, is affected by these uh, these these ancient civilizations and um, like how many words are still in use today that that stem from from that like I thought that most of those would be I don't I, like I don't I, I didn't think about it right it was the thing I didn't I didn't think about where these words came from and uh, so to just be suddenly told that they're from Nahuatl it's just it's kind of incredible to me and I can't pronounce it properly at all when I'm recording I can do pretty good in a in a closed environment, you know, but definitely not here. Anyway, I, I thought that was uh, was was super cool, but yeah, we always learn. They had these uh, these like obsidian knives in uh, in war and stuff as well. These like um, I can't remember the word for it, uh, but it was. I'm trying to think of it. No, I can't. I can't think of the word for it. But it's these like um, paddle boards with these like obsidian rocks that are like jammed into it, and they're just extremely sharp. They're a really funky looking weapon, but um, you know they used obsidian knives back in the day because that's 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 what they had, and they're pretty sharp, right? They're pretty 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 dang sharp, obsidian, and uh, it's just a bizarre looking weapon, but effective, I suppose. So I, uh, we wanted to start looking into like, can you get like a, a modern knife that's that's made out of obsidian? And not really. You can get, you can still buy knives that are made recently out of obsidian, but you can't you can't buy like a a modern knife. Like I can't go buy, you know, like uh, I've got um, a Spiderco Man Bug pocket knife, right? And Fantastic knife, love it dearly. It's uh, served me well over the past many, many years. But I couldn't go buy that with just an obsidian blade, right? I could buy an obsidian blade, but it's going to be like, you know, trying very hard to be um, traditional, quote unquote, which isn't really what it actually was probably like back in the day. I don't even think it is for most of the for most of them. They're just like edgy stuff, trying to be traditional and then then putting like a modern twist on it but it's just edgy um so in in, in looking this stuff up i uh i was talking well not talking but I was, I was reading about this historian um come on i really don't want to die right now it'd be nice to not die right now there's just too many things so um i was reading up about this historian on reddit who uh would uncover uh like uh, civilizations and stuff like that. Like they, they'd excavate these places and and uh, like find the stuff in it. And apparently, um, they would keep their obsidian knives in like the the roofs of uh, of their huts, so that the the kids couldn't get to them. Is is presumably their idea because that's what uh, a lot of people in indigenous um, like. I don't know what I don't know. There's there's a term for indigenous uh, like villages or whatever, um, where where indigenous people are currently living. Um, they'll do a similar thing where they put their now steel knives in uh, in the roof just so that the kids can't get to it. So uh, when you're when you're excavating like uh, when you're when you're uncovering this like ancient civilization, uh, one of the first thing you find is like these really sharp knives, and apparently they're like still sharp, so you can like still cut yourself on them. I mean, if they're just sitting in the ground for a while, it's makes sense that they wouldn't really lose sharpness. Like, they're not being used, they're not being... There's no abrasives or anything like that, right? I hear you. I don't see you. Come on. I, I want to get two wins in a row here. That would be fantastic. Uh, you are not going to be able to escape. I'm sorry. Uh, you might be able to escape. I don't know where you went. 
You got what was he just like stuck on the door or something? Like what was what was going on with that buddy? What was what was going on there, bud? He's kinda got stuck. You fool! You absolute fool! You fool! Oh, one one word that uh, that comes from Nahuatl is uh, Quetzal, which which made perfect sense to me. So I'm like, oh yeah, like that's the Quetzalcoatl, right? The um, like bird, snake, god thing of the uh, the indigenous peoples, right? So that one, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But then tomato, how the... God, that's incredible. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like it, if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.